So hello, today I'm at uh, Little Lee's Village and the Church of St John the Evangelist in Essex and I'd like to talk to you briefly about the village and the church. You must excuse the noise, it's a very, very uh, bad storm that's hitting at the moment. So I'm going to make my way over to the church itself. Definitely take refuge in here now. Oh, oh that is blowing the girl. It really is. So So just to talk briefly about the village, um, it's six and a half miles north of Chelmsford and the village lies beside the River Tur. It's just under two miles away from the remains of uh, Little Lees or Lees Priory. Uh, this was an old priory of the Austin Canons of the 13th century. Um, it was raised to the ground in 1536 under Henry VIII and the priory was founded by Ralph Gurnham, who became a powerful landowner. So he would have been uh, well connected to this church itself. Now, we're actually standing in a porch that was um, constructed in 1895. But this church itself is based on the 12th century. So it's uh, now Norman. Now, if we look at the door jams either side, what you'll see if you look at it closely is, is lots of a series of holes all the way down. Now, these were what they what they used to call um, as the poor man's medicine, and they were not a graffiti a form of graffiti as such. Um, it was believed that if you was to take some of the stone, which would be blessed, and used to grind it down, mix it with um, oil or wine or vinegar or water, I guess, then it could help you with your ailments. So this door is 13th century. It's the original South Oak door. It's got really nice, oak, uh, really nice iron workings there. And if you look, you can see how it's been repaired. The carpenters have cut in new pieces of oak. Great skill. So now we're going to enter. And the wind is trying to push me, push this big old door open. Now if you look at this door also, you've got this like fabric, which I find quite interesting. And that runs around the door that's to keep the wind out I guess and I'll go back a little bit just give you a sense of the, the vista of it all I should close this lovely old door looks like it's all made in oak So I'm going to turn around now. So now we're standing into the nave area. Now the nave itself is 40 and a half feet by 17 and a half feet, 12th century. And as you walk in, you come across this lovely old font and it's well positioned and if you look it's stepped on the base and you've got animals on the corners and foliage it's so worn you can hardly see it on the top section the octagonal font shape has got animals and foliage 
you can see the pat patination there. And if you look inside, you can see the original lead liner. And again, this may come across as vandalism graffiti, but it's actually not as such. Medieval periods, it was seen that if you scraped in patterns, you would get a blessing. So if you look closely, you can see all over the place, there's circles on the sides. And I did notice on this side, there's circles here all over the place. Again, it's all part of the receiving blessings and so on. Now, we look at these lovely old pews. They're all carved, hand carved out of oak. And they're all um, early 16th century. And you can just see the crude way they've been planed. And you can actually see the end panels there. Literally just split down the, the log itself to make the panels. And if you sit in here, it gives you a perspective of how it would be. It's just quality, it really is. Lovely old pews. So early 16th century, incredible age. If you look here, you can see the original Norman Lancet windows. Built of a defensive nature. Now as we come on to the north wall here, So this window is a lot more recent than you can think. It actually represents St Paul, St Peter, St Paul, I think in that order, 1951. If you watch my videos, you will know that I have a soft spot for such for these windows. Over here, just can't get over these the way these are just hacked out of a piece of oak, it's fantastic. Here we have the original pre-seat and piscina in the corner there. Been heavily worked. That is called a sedina, a sedilia. Now, the actual chancer itself was added in the next century. It's 23 and a quarter by 17 and a quarter feet. It's 13th century. Now, as you enter the chancel, what you what your eyes caught to is the fine tracery around this opening, but also what sits inside it. So this is really unusual. This is a 14th century tomb projection. And this is of a priest who is 13th century. It's a life-sized effigy and he would have been buried, he is buried beneath in the tomb and he wears vestments and his head is supported by two angels that have been defaced probably in the time of Oliver Cromwell it looks like his nose has been knocked off or maybe it's uh, rubbed over the centuries so he knows if you follow it down At the base, there is a lamb and lion with mane. Now, interestingly, there's only 100 uh, wooden 
effigies in the whole country. And this is the only one of a priest. So it's incredibly rare, incredibly rare. And originally it would have been painted white and it would have had colours of red and blue added and it was designed to be moved and it would have been portable. And the idea was that uh, it would have been taken to out for the Easter Septica, or Septula, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. So this part of the chancel was extended and it looks like it's in the Victorian period. 1875 seems to have been a major restoration there. And again, they've, uh, the Victorians have added a pre-seat at this end. So this church has had two positions over the years. But even so, it's done really nice, been really done nicely. This east window here, it's from 1895 and St John is represented by an old man. And there's some lovely stonework there. This screen again, which we'll go over to it now, is in oak and again it's 1895. I'm going to put the lights on actually. There. May as well use them, so it gives you an idea just how it looks with the lights on. Beautiful. There's another thing that I want to talk about here, which is the rude screen, or not the rude, the rude stairs. And during the renovations of 1895, the, the Victorian builders have exposed the original rude stairs steps which are now blocked up fascinating now this pulpit here which I should go up into gives you an idea of how it is today Now, again, this is a fine piece of oak, if you look at it from the sides. And this was made from pews that were here before in 1895. Now also, if you look around on the walls, there are various monuments and these are after the death of Charles Rich in 18, 1673, who was the fourth Earl of Warwick. And he passed on to his son Robert Montagu, who's the third Earl of Manchester. There's some more here. There's four mo monuments in total and they're all from the Wellsteed family of Manchester. So again, I'm going to flick on all the lights here to illuminate the ceiling. And I will turn these off when I leave. If you look at the old beams, well, these are of incredible age.
So where we're now in the nave, this is 14th century truss rafter roof. It's got two massive oak beams running across, which you can see there. Up in the belfry, which is up there, there's the rope. Up the top there, <coughs> we have a single bell by Miles Gray in, um, let me focus that in again, from 1675. Now, now today, St. John the St. John the Evangelist Church is, is a very active little church and they still carry out funerals, weddings, baptisms and they're very um, into the community with, with events that are going on. A very active little church. It's also on the Essex walking route, the Essex Way. So people are always welcome to drop in. And I mean, if you look around, you can just see how welcome they are. They've got the usual items for sale, but they've also laid on very kindly tea and coffee and biscuits and things like that, which is really nice. And they've got some books here that explain various things that go on. So if we, I'll finish up now by going outside and if you bear with the noise we'll just walk around the church itself. I'd just like to point out there is a wall on the north wall, I've got a feeling it's over here. Um, it looks like it's got Roman, possibly Roman bricks or tiles constructed into it. Off we go. Now we're on the north side. You can see from the outside there the window of St. Peter, St. John. You can see clearly how the Victorians have modified the outside. go. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much.